how to invest wasn't taught at medical school, which is fair enough because investing has nothing to do with being a good doctor. But if you're a doctor like me and you don't want to work long hours in a stressful and increasingly difficult job until you retire at a time that the government decrees that you can, then I think you're going to need to learn to invest. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you five reasons why I invest. Reason number one, the NHS pension has a problem. If you've watched any of our other videos, you'll know how much we appreciate the NHS pension and how for the vast majority of us, we still think it represents an excellent proposition and an important part of our overall pay and reward package. But it has a problem. And that problem is that the age at which you can retire from the NHS pension is getting further and further away and doctors and other NHS pension staff are gonna be working longer and longer. In the 1995 section of the NHS pension scheme, way back in the day, the retirement age was 60 and 55 if you had something called special class status. When the 2008 section came in, that retirement age was increased to 65. And in the 2015 scheme, which we're all now in, if you're still in active service, the retirement age in the 2015 scheme is linked to state retirement age. And this, I think, is a big problem. For me, that's already 68. Now, you're thinking, well, don't worry, because you can take the pension before your pensionable age, and that is absolutely true, but you will get the pension actually reduced. The amount of pension that you get will be reduced for each year that you take it early. And whilst these are actuarial calculations, they still can be surprisingly punitive. So if you don't wanna work, long hours in a super stressful environment until the age that the government decrees that you can retire, then you need to get a alternative plan to fill in that gap between your desired retirement age and the age at which the government decrees you can retire. So mind the gap, like I've said in there. And you're like, okay, Tommy, don't worry. I'm gonna save my money in the piggy bank and that will help me to retire early. Well, this graph shows you why you can't save your way to wealth because it shows the returns from 10,000 pounds invested in 1998 into shares and cash before and after the effects of inflation. And your returns from whatever you have, cash or shares, the returns from those after inflation is in my opinion, the only measure that really matters because that is the actual real money that you are left with. And lots of people underestimate just how much of a problem inflation has been. And as you can see from this graph, you save 10,000 pounds in 1998. You're looking at the graph thinking, oh, not too bad. It's worth about 18,000 pounds by the end of 2022, the cash. Well, once you adjust that cash for inflation, you've actually lost money in real terms by holding cash at the bank. Contrast that to someone who invested 10,000 pounds in 1998 in a super low, boring investment like the FTSE All World Index. They would have turned that 10,000 pounds into around 40,000 pounds in real terms, adjusted for inflation. So you cannot save your way to wealth and cash is historically been a terrible investment. But maybe you're hanging on to what your parents told you, which is to save your money in a piggy bank and you'll be okay. And maybe you're saying, well, Tommy, the last 10 or 15 years has been historically low interest rates, which have been slightly abnormal. And maybe since 1998 isn't a fair way to measure cash. All right, have a look at this graph, which shows what would have happened if you invested one pound in 1899 into UK shares, bonds and cash. As you can see, shares have overwhelmingly outperformed cash, historically speaking, in that time frame. Now, Past performance does not reflect future performance is what we always have to say. But if you're gonna rely on that, just have a look at this super long time frame, which shows you why I don't think cash is an investment. To reinforce that, let's have a real world example of three doctors. Dr. Consistent realizes that cash is not an investment early doors and is fortunate enough to be able to save 200 pounds a month from the age of 25. And they invest that money at the age of 65 Dr. Consistent would have turned that money into £381,604, historically speaking. Let's have a look at Dr. Nervous. Dr. Nervous thought that cash was an investment and that investing was risky. So Dr. Nervous at the age of 25 began putting £200 a month into a cash investment. And at the age of 65, Dr. Nervous had just £98,327. And let's have a look at Dr. Late. Dr. Late 
was heavily in debt from going to medical school and was only able to start saving at the age of 40. And Dr. Late saved 200 pounds a month, every month for the age of 40. At the age of 65, despite starting way later than Dr. Nervous who thought cash was an investment, Dr. Late has actually overtaken Dr. Nervous and has got 135,282 pounds. Here's another reason why you need to start as soon as possible. This slide shows you why I think you need to think about starting as soon as possible. Like me, you probably went to medical school, got a ton of debt, had no money when you were younger and couldn't start any earlier. So if that is you, don't worry, but just have a look at this graph because it shows you the effect of compound interest, so-called eighth wonder of the world by Einstein. And we can talk about compound interest all day long and realize that it starts to really ramp up over time. But I like this graph because it just shows you how it ramps up over time. So we talked about Dr. Consistent, who at the age of 25 started investing 200 pounds a month in a low cost, globally diversified tracker, set and forget, no dramas. It took Dr. Consistent 21 years to get their first 100,000 pounds. But then the second 100,000 pounds took just 10 years and they didn't change anything just they start to feel the effect of compound interest. The third 100,000 pounds took Dr. Consistent just six years to get. So first 100,000, 21 years, second 100,000, 10 years, third 100,000, six years. That just shows you the effect of compound interest, which is what you get when you follow a sensible investing strategy, historically speaking, of course. Another reason which I think is really important for doctors is if you're a doctor, you are trading your time for money. One hour of my time as a doctor gets one hour of pay. And I cannot see more than one patient simultaneously, although I know that lots of you, including myself, are often simultaneously managing many, many patients because of the pressures that we're in in the NHS at the moment. But you still get paid. One hour of your time gets you one hour of money. What the holy grail is passive income, where one hour of your time could equal six hours of pay. And you're thinking, hmm, sounds like a scam. Much better to go and do an A&E locum shift and get more one hour of time exchanged for one hour of money. Well, actually, there's actually loads of different ways that you can earn passive income, whether that's investing in stocks, investing in property, investing in building a business. But I think you just need to think about if you want to work less and not trim your lifestyle down at all, then you're gonna need to escape from the one hour of work equaling one hour of pay. And instead, maybe one hour of work could equal many hours of pay. Another reason to think about investing is that it can be incredibly tax efficient. You already pay a lot of tax and the more you earn, the more tax that you pay. But on your investments, it's perfectly possible to pay zero tax. If you compare that to how your income is taxed at 40, 45, or even 60%, then investing can be incredibly tax efficient. And there's also ways where the government will actually contribute to your investment pot, effectively chipping in to support your investments. And the final reason is financial freedom. Now, I mentioned the NHS pension, which is a great thing to have. And eventually we will all reach financial freedom. And by financial freedom, I mean, we'll no longer need to work in order to pay our bills because eventually we'll be able to retire on the NHS pension. But if you don't wanna do that at the age that the government decrees, state retirement age, which for me is 68, then you are gonna need a backup plan. And this backup plan can give you financial freedom way before you get to state retirement age, when hopefully you'll be young enough and fit enough to enjoy the money. And if you've got more money, it does give you more choices. You might choose to work less as you get older and not pay any financial penalty for that. You might choose to take a year out and take your entire family on a trip around the world. But incredibly fortunate position to be in, but you're only gonna be in that position if you start to do something about it now. I hope that video helped. If you like these videos, hit the like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video.